What's up, Pharmacy Nation? I'm Pharmacy Joe. Thank you for being a listener of the Elective Rotation, a critical care and hospital pharmacy podcast. This is episode 536. In this episode, I'll discuss using heparin anti-10A levels to evaluate apixaban, rivaroxaban, fondaparinux, and dinaparoid levels. I have all the evidence supporting today's show linked up in the show notes at pharmacyjoe.com slash episode 536. 10A inhibitors, such as apixaban, rivaroxaban, fondaparinux, and dinaparoid, do not have readily available assays, yet there is often a clinical need to determine their presence or absence. Because heparin anti-10A assays are overly sensitive to other 10A inhibitors, they cannot be used reliably to differentiate between therapeutic and supertherapeutic levels of 10A inhibitors. However, a low heparin anti-10A level may be clinically useful to identify patients that do not have relevant concentrations of 10A inhibitors present. This could be used to inform whether an invasive procedure or surgery with a high bleeding risk could be undertaken in a patient previously on a 10A inhibitor. Researchers recently published such information in Anesthesia and Analgesia. Clinically relevant concentrations of apixaban, rivaroxaban, fondaparinux, and dinaparoid were identified, and a heparin anti-10A level cutoff was established in a derivation cohort, which was then validated in a separate patient cohort. The authors found that with over 96% accuracy, their heparin anti-10A cutoffs could identify patients which no longer had relevant concentrations of 10A inhibitors. The cutoff values for screening for relevant concentrations of 10A inhibitors were as follows. For apixaban, a heparin anti-10A of 0.2 or less identified a patient without relevant concentrations. For rivaroxaban, it was a heparin anti-10A of 0.3 or less. And for fondaparinux and dinaparoid, a heparin anti-10A level had to be less than 0.1. These heparin anti-10A level cutoffs can easily be put into practice for patients scheduled to undergo invasive procedures with high bleeding risk to identify those who no longer have clinically relevant levels of the 10A inhibitor present. To access my free download area with 20 different resources to help you in your practice, go to pharmacyjoe.com free. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you in the next episode of the Elective Rotation.